subscribe to the channel please be sure to do so also if you like the video make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you want a little bit more of the day-to-day -day stuff check us out on instagram Callie's always doing stuff with instagram and stories you can find us at ag aviation adventures i'm currently out killing off edible beans specifically navy beans you may be wondering, why are you killing off the navy beans? So they're actually getting ready to harvest these. It's mid-September, and these are about ready to be harvested. And like a lot of crops, the navy bean needs to be dry prior to harvesting. If it's too moist, if the moisture content is too high, you're going to get dinged, and that's going to affect your revenue. Also, more importantly, is that I'm kind of evening out the field. That's what I'd call it, evening out the field. If you look at the field here from the air, you can see that there's a lot of green patches, and there's a lot of yellowish patches, and then there's some dead patches. Well, you can't harvest that field as it sits because a lot of that is still alive and it's too moist. There are a couple things you could do. One, you could spray the field like I'm currently doing, but you could also give it time and wait for that field to dry out. However, there are some problems with that. One being, some of this field is already dry, and if you let it sit for weeks on end while the other parts of the field become dry, the part that's already dry is going to be too dry. And when you go to harvest, you're going to break beans, which is not good, and that's going to affect your, your yield. Also, where we're located up here in northern Minnesota, this time of year, it's not very conducive to letting the bean dry out naturally. We have a lot of cloudy days, a lot of days that have rain, drizzle, that kind of stuff, and the bean doesn't dry out very easily under those conditions. So we use a chemical to kill them. Now there are some other options. You could knife the bean, or what's called knifing. And it's literally on the front of a tractor, you drive a tractor through the field. Now on the front of it, it has an apparatus that cuts the bean plant down near the ground and the bean plant falls out of the ground and then you come through and you put them into rows and then you have a bean combine after that you can combine the bean. Now a couple issues with this is that you need a specific combine. So with these beans you could come through here with the same combine that you use on soybeans. You could come through this field after I get done and everything dries out and you could come and you could combine them. But if you knife them, you have to have a specific combine for that application. Also, if it's wet, if the field is wet, you're not going to get through there with any type of tractor that you could knife the bean. You could also take a ground rig through, and you could spray them by ground. But what has happened with this particular field is that under certain conditions, the beans can actually grow together, and so they lay over, and they start intertwining with each other, and they start to grow together. So if you come through with a tractor, those beans are now growing together, the rows are not nice and open, and you start pushing beans into the ground, and that's not good when you go to combine them as well. That, can, again, can affect your yield. So that's kind of why I'm doing it by air. And that's also why I'm using a product on it. Now, what's the product that I'm using? Well, it's called Sharpen. And it's great because, one, it kills the root of the plant. So it gets down to the root, and that plant stops growing. It also works very quickly. So the pre-harvest interval is only two days on this. 
So you can't just come out here and harvest this afternoon after I get done spraying, but you can come out and harvest in only a few days, which is really nice. And you may be asking yourself the question, well, Tyson, am I eating sharpen in my white chicken chili? The answer to that question is no, you are not eating sharpened. So the bean is actually protected inside of a pod. It's enclosed in this pod. And the pod has sharpen on it. But if you open the pod up, there is absolutely no sharpen that gets on the bean that you would be eating. Uh, also, these beans, the navy beans that have, that have sprayed, these are for human consumption. So uh, we'll be eating them, and they also get exported to Europe for human consumption over there as well. Hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of an idea of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. If you have any questions or comments, please be sure to leave them below, and we will get back to you. Also, if you've made it this far, I do have a little bit of a surprise here at the end. It's actually not an amazing surprise, but uh, I will fly over a field that has been knifed, and you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like from the air. Uh, I can show you what parts have been knifed, and then you can see how they've been put into rows. So not a great surprise, but that's going to be at the very end. So thanks again for watching. As always, fly low and fly fast. I do need to thank our friend Will. This is actually his field that I'm currently spraying. And he helped me with some of the information for this video. All right, as promised, I'm just flying over a field right now that's been knifed. This end of the field has already been cut and then put into rows, and those rows will be combined. This end down here, my wingtip is now right over it. That's been knifed. But they're still in their exact rows where they grew. They'll come through next. And they'll put them into those rows that you saw in the beginning there. And then from those rows, they'll then be combined.